Hey folks, welcome to this quick impromptu video just to discuss a couple of things from the recent AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt review. In that review, I was talking about MQA and I incorrectly called it Master Quality Audio. I've been corrected by a viewer, Lan Yi O. Um, it's actually Master Quality Authenticated is what it should say. So my apologies for that error and thanks for pointing that out. The other thing that he mentioned is that the first unfold that's done in software actually goes up to 96 kilohertz and 24 bits. So in other words, it's already giving you the high res even without a DAC like the Dragonfly. So this got me to doing a bit more research. I was able to find some much better information and I'll share two links, one of them provided by Lan Yi O and the other one that I found myself as I went hunting. And I've now got a much better explanation. So I wanted to jump back on here and actually share exactly what is going on with MQA and how it works. So you'll see here I've got Rune open with title showing and I've plugged in a few different DACs. So I've got the, the Shitgun Year Multi-Bit plugged in, which is not an MQA DAC. I've also got the Dragonfly Red, which is MQA, but it's a renderer only. And I've then got the Meridian Explorer 2 plugged in, which is a full renderer and decoder for MQA. So I'm just going to step through each of the levels of what's possible so that we fully understand what's going on in MQA. As I mentioned in the Cobalt review, MQA is essentially a technology that allows for files to be compressed in theory to a smaller size than an equivalent FLAC file, and yet it will provide you with high-res audio once it's unfolded by the software, for instance. There's three levels of unfolding that can be done. The first level is all about bringing what essentially arrives as a standard 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz FLAC file and expanding that to actually retrieve the high-res information. And so that's actually what's done in the first unfold. So if I choose a track on here in title that is a master, let's say for instance I choose the Kronos Quartet over here, and you can see in the display that this is a FLAC 48 kilohertz 24-bit file, but it's also MQA 96 kilohertz. So what that's telling me is that when I hit play on this, what's actually going to happen is that Rune, because it is title enabled, is going to unpack that file for us. So if we open up the, the path here, what you can see is that the source is mentioned here, it's authenticated with MQA, and it's a 96 kilohertz studio file. And so what's happening is that the the Rune software is actually then able to unpack that. To demonstrate, let me change to the Gumby. You'll notice here it's still the same file coming in. It's being unpacked to 96 using the MQA core decoder. And so what that tells us is that if you are using MQA software such as Rune or the Tidal app itself, you're going to be able to get that full high-res playback through any DAC you like. The only time you're not going to be able to get the full high-res equivalent is if you've bought an MQA file or album and you're playing it back through non-MQA software. So for instance, I use JRiver as another audio source in my system. If I was to buy one of these files and play it back in JRiver, I'm not gonna get 96 kilohertz out of it with a standard DAC. It's simply not possible for the software to do that unfold. If we have a look at level two, we're now talking about what I spoke about with the Cobalt, which is rendering. So I'm gonna change the queue over and send the queue through to the Dragonfly. What you'll notice now, so we've still got the same files playing, so they've got the capability of being MQA 96 kilohertz. And what's happening now is that the core decoder, which is the software decoder, is still happening in Rune. What Rune is then doing is sending it to the MQA renderer, which is the Dragonfly. So from the reading I've done, what that means is that after the software does the initial unfold, which is the most intensive part of the process, there are then some fine details that are able to be further enhanced through the, in this case, the Dragonfly, so through a, a true renderer. So what that means is that when you're buying a renderer, you're getting something that's less expensive than a full decoding solution, 
but it means you can play back full quality MQA audio so long as the first part of the chain is an MQA recognized software such as Rune or Tidal or on an Android phone you might be using the USB Audio Player Pro which connects up with Tidal beautifully as well. So any of those softwares that have the ability to do that first unfold of the audio and can then allow the renderer just to put the finishing touches on. Now some further information that Yan Leo shared with me and I'll put the link down below would suggest that this final piece may come down to the way the audio is actually filtered and managed in the decoding. So it's not increasing resolution so much as making sure that, it, that the signal is handled, reconstructed into an analog format in just the right way. So at this stage, what we're seeing is that something like the Dragonflies are actually just as good as something like the Meridian Explorer, so long as you're using it with software that does the first stage of the unfold for you. When the materials I was reading on the MQA website were sort of talking about three levels of unfolding, it's a little bit misleading. In some ways, there's really only two from what I can tell, which is that the file gets first of all taken from being a standard FLAC file to a high res FLAC file, and then it's being further finessed in the rendering stage. Just to put that into context, let's go and have a look at a full decoder now, and that is by looking at Meridian Explorer 2. So we're having a look at the Meridian Explorer 2 now, and if I open this up, what you'll notice is that the same file's coming in, or the same format's coming in, and what's happening is that it's being authenticated as a studio file, but then it's just being handed straight through to the DAC. So everything is being done in what it's calling here the MQA full decoder, which is the Meridian Explorer 2. Essentially what this means from everything I've read is that if you were to use software such as JRiver, for instance, you would actually be able to play a, an MQA file that you own straight through to the Explorer, and it's going to take care of the unfolding at the first level to a high-res file, and then further render it into the fully-fledged MQA experience. So I've jumped over now to JRiver just to confirm the theory that if I play a, an MQA file that I own, it's a, a file on my hard drive, it's not coming through Tidal or anything like that. If I play that direct to the Meridian Explorer, and I've set that all up in here, so it's the Explorer has been selected, it's running in exclusive mode, I've switched off all DSP, so it's a bit perfect stream going straight to the Explorer. If I now play that, in theory it should give me MQA audio, and I can see looking at the Explorer that the blue light has come on to say that it is MQA. So flipping back and forth between Rune and JRiver, what I'm seeing is that in both examples, the Meridian Explorer is playing as if it's a fully decoded MQA file, which is what I expected from everything that I've read. In contrast, if I send that same file to the Dragonfly Cobalt now, I'm noticing that the Cobalt light turns purple if I'm playing it through Rune, and because we're seeing what we saw before, which is that it is being recognized as MQA and it's being decoded within Rune before it's handed over to the Cobalt. However, if I play the same file, exactly the same file within JRiver, and just confirming once again that I'm sending this through with absolutely no adjustment to the audio, so it's all bit perfect. So there's nothing that should be getting in the way of it recognizing that it's an MQA playback. And I'm seeing that the light on the Cobalt is now green. And the green light means that it is a 44.1 kilohertz file, which if I come back over to Rune, you can see here that it's being sent through as the original file format, which is 44 kilohertz, 24 bit. So hopefully that's given you some understanding of the different levels of decoding or unfolding, if you like, of MQA files. So just to recap, if you don't have MQA certified software, you can still play MQA files, but they're going to play back like a standard CD quality FLAC file. If you have software that can handle it, it doesn't matter which DAC you have, you're still going to be able to get the high res output of the MQA file, so long as you've got an MQA enabled software such as USB Audio Player Pro or Rune or the Tidal app itself. If you then add a renderer to the system, you're going to get an extra level of quality out of those files once they've been decoded by the software, but you do need the software to do the first layer of decoding. And finally, if you go to a fully fledged decoder like the Meridian Explorer 2, it doesn't matter what software you're using, as long as it's not messing with the file on its way through to the actual DAC, you're going to be able to get 
all of the quality out of the MQA file because that decoder can do the first unfold to get the high res information and then it can do this, the rendering as well which is where you get the extra layer of finessing and filtering that happens. So hopefully this is helpful. Again, apologies that there was some misinformation in the original review of the Cobalt. Hopefully this has clarified it for you. Uh, thanks for checking out this video and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon on Passion for Sound. Music